one of the most efficient yet ruthless execution methods used throughout history was the guillotine. Inside of the Second World War, it was used as a way of condemning thousands of traitors within Hitler's Germany, and it was used so much that the executioners could take the head of a victim within just a matter of seconds inside of German prisons. Hitler viewed it as sufficient punishment for what he thought was the worst crime of defeatism. But throughout the centuries, it was used in France following the emergence of the French Revolution. It was actually the French king, Louis XVI, who helped to bring the execution device of the guillotine, and when people first saw an execution using the device, they actually hated it, as they believed it was too clinical, and they actually preferred more brutal methods, such as a breaking wheel, where someone was literally battered with their limbs being shattered. But the French king who brought the guillotine to his nation actually lost his head on it, as did his wife and queen Marie Antoinette. These were huge public spectacles, however the final public execution in France occurred shortly before the Second World War broke out, in June 1939, with a German criminal and serial killer being executed in front of a large crowd that had gathered outside of a prison. Welcome to the Untold Past, Today we look at the horrific execution of the last public guillotining in France, and as always to support, please make sure to subscribe. Eugene Weidmann was a German man, and he was born in Frankfurt, but following the outbreak of the First World War, he was sent to live with his grandparents, and whilst he lived with them, he began a life of crime, and he got in trouble with the law for the first time. He was a thief and was caught stealing, and he then served a significant five-year imprisonment sentence for carrying out robberies. However, he then met a number of other bad influences and criminals whilst he was behind bars. He met specifically two men, Jean Blanc and Roger M. Leon, and the pair, then after their release from prison, stole significant funds, and the three managed to rent a villa with their criminal exploits. But they went further, and the men then tried to kidnap a victim, and they may have wanted to then hold this victim for ransom for more money. But because this person struggled too much, the criminals were forced to let the man go. However, in July 1937, Weidman and his two accomplices tried to abduct a 22-year-old dancer from New York City named Jean de Cohen. She was visiting her aunt at the time, and Jean later wrote in a letter that, I've just met a charming German of keen intelligence who calls himself Siegfried. Perhaps I'm going to another Wagnerian role, who knows? I'm going to visit him tomorrow at his villa in a beautiful place near a famous mansion that Napoleon gave Josephine. However, during the meeting, the pair, Weidman and Jean de Cohen, got on well, but then Weidman made his move. He attacked the young woman and then strangled her, murdering her, before he buried her body inside the garden of the villa they managed to rent. Jean de Cohen's family frantically hunted for her, and for answers as to what happened to her, and little emerged from these investigations. But a few months on, Eugene Weidman then hired a chauffeur named Joseph Koufi. Koufi drove Eugene to the French Riviera, and then the car came to a stop in a forest. During this, Weidman then took out his pistol, and he shot the chauffeur in the neck, and then stole his car and took all of his money that he had on his possession. But Weidman continued to slaughter and attack, and he also killed a nurse, who he somehow managed to lure into a cave inside of a forest, and he then robbed her, and then shot her in the neck after killing her. He then made off with this woman's diamond ring also, and he continued to attack many people. But Weidman then arranged to meet with a producer of theatrical shows, and he stole 5,000 francs from this man, after he then shot him in the back. Further murder came as he slaughtered a man who he had met behind bars in prison, Fritz Frommer. Frommer had been actually held for possessing anti-Nazi views, but Eugene Weidman continued with the same murderous tactics and he shot Frommer in the neck. It was then five days later that the serial killer carried out his final murder, as he slaughtered an estate agent. But the police and law enforcement then managed to track Eugene Weidman, and when he was out of the house, there were two officers who were at the villa waiting for him. When he realised what was happening, he took out his pistol, and then shot three times at the police with his weapon, and he injured the policemen. But they somehow tried to wrestle the serial killer, and they knocked him out with a hammer. But now Eugene Weidman was behind bars, and surprisingly he cooperated very well with the police force, and he confessed to all of his crimes, but he claimed that specifically the one he regretted was the slaughter of the young woman, Jean de Cohen. He claimed that, 
She was gentle and unsuspecting. When I reached for her throat, she went down like a doll. But along with the other suspects, he was brought to trial. But Weidman was the only one of the men who was sentenced to death for his crimes. But his execution became infamous inside of France, as it became the final public execution performed inside the country. And for centuries, executions had been performed in front of huge crowds in major cities. But there was one thing that the authorities did not consider. This was that the public had cameras and means of capturing the grisly moment in which someone was executed, and Eugene Weidman's execution was considered shocking, despite the fact it was performed well by the executioner. Because of Weidman's execution, the law was then changed so that executions would take place inside of prisons, behind the walls, away from the eyes of the public. Weidman, on the 17th of June 1939, was led out of his prison cell from Saint-Pierre Prison in Versailles, and he was led out to the crowd. The execution was actually captured on film and in photographs, and spectators waited for hours to ensure that they had a good view of the execution proceedings. At this time in France, the executions were performed before sunrise, but there were many reporters who were there to take photographs of the moment that the guillotine blade fell. The images and behaviour of the crowd shocked the people in charge of the proceedings, but later than originally planned, Eugene Weidman was led out of the prison with his hands tied behind his back. In terms of his appearance, he was wearing a white shirt, and the neck and collar of the shirt had been folded down to make sure that the blade of the guillotine did not get caught. But the crowd then claimed that there was a powerful wave of howling and shrieking when he was brought to the foot of the guillotine execution device. The executioner and his assistants worked quickly, and Weidman was strapped to the board, and he was then slid under the guillotine blade and was locked into place. Prison guards and spectators held their breath, and Weidman tried to fight the executioners, but the executioner, following making a few final checks, then quickly released the blade, which fell onto Eugene Weidman's neck, and his head was taken off in one blow. There were a number of spectators who actually rushed to the guillotine, and some, it was claimed, did not hesitate to soak their handkerchiefs and scarves in the blood spread on the pavement as a souvenir. But following this, the guillotine was then taken down, and the pavement was also washed down, and quickly after things continued, as if an execution had not happened, and cafes were opened and they served lunch, within hours of a head being taken off a short distance away. But the iconic nature of Eugene Weidman's execution was that it was the final one carried out in France in public. It was the last of centuries of bloodshed that was enacted on the streets of the nation, and the reason for the change was the behaviour of the crowd who took photographs. It was an execution remembered for some of the right things, as never again was a public execution carried out on the streets of French cities. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.